Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update. And you know, I'm going to talk about a really kind of mysterious announcement today that came from Flare Networks. And in doing so, we need to also take a look at Ethereum. Looks to me like 4,000 is incoming. And the reason why I want to talk about Ethereum is because this Flare Networks is going to be, I think, having a lot of the Ethereum developers paying attention, as well as gamers, NFT enthusiasts, and anybody who is in the crypto ecosphere. In an article that I found on Crypto Globe by one of my favorite writers here, Siamak Masnavi, he said that Rao Paul and the investors around him are shifting their allocations of allocation of funds from Bitcoin to Ethereum. So what's going on? Well, we know that Ethereum is going to go through an upgrade called by the developers the merge. And this is where they're going to swap out the proof of work, which uses mining, uh, to a more eco-friendly proof of stake, a consensus mechanism that is probably going to take effect sometime. It's estimated in Q1 of 2022. If you own Ethereum, don't worry, you don't have to do anything. But this switch is expected to save 99% of the current energy used. That is quite significant. So what about the gas fees and the scaling? Well, these have also some future updates on the roadmap, such as sharding, which will directly help improve gas prices. At this time, though, sharding is a lower priority than the merge, which eliminates this wasteful proof of work energy and efficiency. So in the meantime, until they get all of that done, there's going to be fierce competition to grab market share and flare is going to be right there and you we can see that with the announcement that they made today which is a stealth move and it is with a metaverse so metaverse well you might find yourself if you're in a metaverse playing you might be trading you might be creating uh, you might be sharing you might be monetizing yeah, let me just play a short portion of the video that they released today where it shows a virtual world that I think leaves you wanting to know more. Have a look at this. It does come with music, but I didn't want to play because I'm not sure what the copyrights are. But you can see a lot of this AI with individuals that have names in a universe that looks very surreal. And it's kind of leaves you feeling like, what exactly is going on here? It's really rather mysterious. Definitely coming summer 2021, powered by Flair. So when we look at different metaverses out there. Facebook wants you to experience virtual reality and jump into a meta universe and have this social experience in that sphere through their next generation headset. It's a it's a wire free experience that you'll be able to participate in for just $299. It looks very interesting. And for those who I think have played Pokemon, or maybe still playing Pokemon, you experience the augmented reality. Augmented reality is really popular in Japan. They have even these special nail tips that you purchase for about $20, and then they become wearable art with a download of an app that brings the nails totally into a virtual reality with falling cherry blossoms, swimming koi fish, fluttering butterflies, everything comes to life with this app on your phone. In games across the universe, you might be collecting avatars that you earned in maybe some gameplay. If we have these new 
metaverse in a decentralized and interoperable platform. You would be able to take these avatars with you, keep them, or bring them to a marketplace where you could trade or sell them for cryptocurrency, for example. So do you remember the NFT called 5,000 Days that sold for $69.3 million? The buyer, known by his moniker as Metakovan, he's working with the world's best architects on the planet to build a museum in a metaverse to display the digital artwork to be enjoyed through an experience that's purely digital in a way that can only exist in the metaverse, a really immersive experience. So the value chain of the open metaverse, Tim Sweeney, CEO of Epic Games, he has said that if one central company gains control of this, they will become more powerful than any government and be a god on earth. <laughs> well, I think the decentralized evolution of the internet might hold the key. This is a multi-trillion dollar economy and our best bet against the big controlling, domineering entities that you may call a company can be really put on the same level playing field in a decentralized platform. It's all about using technology to create trustless systems, a new economy, really. I think it's adios, sayonara, bye-bye to the oligopolies. So I am very excited to see exactly what Flare Networks is bringing to the marketplace. And I just think that this is going to be an amazing experience and opportunity for anyone in the crypto space. All right, everybody, we're jumping to a little fluff. And I just want to talk about some VR experiences that you can have here in Japan, in Shinjuku. There is a place called the VR Zone. And it's just a building that is full of different experiences that you can um, choose from. And I did this one here that you wear one of these VR headsets and you step into an elevator, not really, but in the virtual world, you step into an elevator, you go up 200 meters in a skyscraper and the doors open and in front of you, you have this plank at which there is a kitty at the end of the plank that you have to go rescue. And you probably only have to walk, I did this, but to do it successfully, you only have to walk about not even 10 feet, about six or seven feet. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. That's how real the whole experience was. I knew in my mind, this is just a virtual reality. I knew that I was just on the floor of the building. I knew that it was all fake, but I couldn't do it. I just could, I just froze. I couldn't go forward. I couldn't go backwards. I just couldn't do it. So yeah, how many times do I have to say it, right? But I was so shocked that I couldn't do it. And I asked the guy, so how often do you find that people like myself just can't even take one step? And he says, it happens a lot. So it is really amazing if you have not experienced one of those headsets because it is so real. And there is someone in Japan by the name of Kenta Toshima, and he's creating virtual experiences for seniors. What a great use of this technology. They are able to go back into their memories, taking trips to their hometowns or visiting a place that they've maybe never been before, even reading newspapers or flipping through magazines 
that are 50 years old. It has been one of the best therapies for seniors in Japan, and it's quite famous. Uh, he's very active in creating content for this application. It's really, really great. All right, everybody. Yes, that's all I have for you today. Do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.